Prima Swarupa, embodiments of love, because that's who we are. I sit before you now as a product of the divine feminine, because I was given birth to by a mother. I didn't go to any formal education until I was 23 years of age, so I was educated by the Divine Mother. I spent most of my time uh, in forests and at rivers, and being Irish, that was easy to find. I drank from the rivers, I ate from the land, I created dishes that if I ever had time to create a cookery book would be very healthy and natural for the body. I sit here as the father of 35,000 and two children. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you how <laughs> I was physically able to be the father and mother of all those children. The Divine Mother rearing me and keeping me very solid and stable in the movement of the world uh, had me have adventures that jokingly I say I don't know how I had these and why I had them but from a very young age I understood far more than I should have understood I understood nature I, under I understood people and I understood that religion uh, was not the most movable thing on the planet. So I like to say I was educated and not educated. Um, because of those experiences, um, I went on to become what people call psychic, I just call intuitive. I was able to know when people were going to die, uh, days before they died, before they knew. I knew people had cancer before they knew they had cancer. I don't know how I knew it, I just knew it. I knew about events that were going to happen well before those events were going to happen. And at about 15, between 15 and 17 years of age, uh, a psychic woman told me, one day, Derek, you are going to sit in front of the Parliament of World Religions, as Viva Canandra did, and you're not going to talk about anything too heavy. You're just going to be. And in your beingness, a message will cross from the understanding that I'm going to tell you how I became uh, the father to all these children. And of these children, there are 11,000 of them who are female. And I saved them, if you like, from tasks like being drowned in India because of the dowry system. Uh, and so, effectively what happened was, being an ordinary guy just living an ordinary life, 9-11 happened here in your country. And I notice on my badge that they say I'm from the United States. Well, I'm actually from Ireland. But um, when 9-11 happened, I don't know how the world you know, puts me into these positions, but it does. I found myself being asked to come and address the United Nations headquarters as to why 9-11 happened. And I stood there and I said, it happened because humanity has lost its five human values of love, peace, truth, non-violence and right conduct. It happened because we have lost our spirituality. It has been repressed. And it happened because every being has one great disease. It is the disease of desire. And it is the only disease that they cannot crunch because it just keeps growing. When they get a car, they want a bigger one. When they get a house, they want a bigger one. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. And instead of being you know, thrown out of the country, uh, you know, because I said President Bush was a big child trying to prove to his daddy that he was a man. <laughs> that Saddam Hussein and those people represented the poor countries of the world whose future had been stolen. And as a parent myself, 
I don't know if I could be forced to get into a plane and drive it into your buildings as a message if I thought my children's lives were in danger and their future. So as you know, I should have been arrested immediately and thrown out of the country. But I actually got a stand and ovation. There must have been angels in the room or something, which, which led to me being casted into this role where Oprah wanted me on her show and whatever. And I said, no, 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 God, sorry, wrong person. That's not what I came for, just to deliver a message that I grew up with. And so I was talked into doing some workshops. And what was happening was there was 2,000 people showing up at workshops with no advertisement whatsoever, just word of mouth. 2,000 people showing up all paying two and $300 each. So I went from somebody who, who you know, had $500 a week wage to somebody who was making lots of money. And I knew my challenge had arrived. I knew it because I'm also a psychotherapist. I did go back to school at 23 and I graduated at the top of my class, 11 straight A's. Strange things happen. And the only reason I went to train as a psychotherapist was to see if I was a lunatic. <laughs> there was two things drove me there. One, was I a lunatic because I was having all these experiences that if a doctor seen me, I would be classed as a lunatic. And the other thing was to have a piece of paper so I could help people with what I knew and understood. And so from there, I found myself with all this money and I decided that I would not fall into the trap. So what I did is I set up uh, a charity, SQ Foundation. And as I sit here now, I work in 13 countries around the world. We've took 35,000 children off the streets of that world who are in danger in one way or another. I've built fully functional open heart surgery hospitals. Last two weeks ago, I opened my first university in India, MA and BA levels in 12 sciences, uh, orphanages and that whatever. And that's what I did with the money. And I didn't do it for any reason but if I didn't, the divine feminine mother would have kicked my ass. So I don't sit here as any saint or anything. I still drink Guinness and I eat meat still. I'm working on it, I'm not perfect, but I love not being perfect. I absolutely adore not being perfect. I love watching. You, you know, if it wasn't for the crap of society, I would have stayed in the forest. But it was, you know, all these experiences that brought me to be able to sit. And uh, I know you, you talk about the Dalai Lama. Well, I was very blessed to meet the Dalai Lama in, in Bodh Gaya on one of my trips and <laughs> I said two things to him that was really beautifully offensive. One was, I'm glad China went into your country and did what they did because you were sitting there very egotistically and pretty with all these fabulous teachings and they would never have got to my ears to save me and many. And his response was, oh, 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 oh. you know that beautiful laugh that he does. And that's when I turned around also and I said to him about, and I said, rumour has it I was a Buddhist in a past life. I said, uh, which is why I'm here, because I had just had a meeting with the uh, Kamapa, who informed me that I was some Buddhist or whatever, something. And I went, well, do you know what? I'm not a Buddhist and I'm not a Catholic and I'm not anything anymore. I believe there's only one religion, it is the religion of love, one caste, the caste of humanity, and one God and she is omnipresent. I said, so until such a time as she arrives back in her full glory, Buddhism and the whole lot of you can sit very stuck and meditate on that one. And again, he just gave that ho 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 laugh. <laughs> And, and I was gently escorted from the room. 
<laughs> and so um, my, my, my message today, and, and, and thank you to the universe once again for placing me in this dream world, is um, my message is very simple. When, when the divine feminine awakens, and it will very soon, because if it doesn't, the world will go into annihilation. When the men take their penis and uh, throw it over their shoulder, they'll actually realize that it'll bounce back because men are acquired as well. The one thing that always was interesting to me growing up, and, and I'll end on this, was watching that period where the woman burned her bra. And I always, always, even then I said, you're actually burning the very symbol of nourishment, the very symbol of feminism, because this is where the babies nurture. So burning the bra was the first thing that you might have did with a, a little bit of ignorance. And the second thing was, I was there when Margaret Thatcher took over the government and went from being a divine feminine to being a man with bigger testicles than some of the men sitting in front of her. And again, the wrong message was given. So let's not wear pinstripe suits as women. Let's wear flowing natural dresses and if you do, you will have the experience that Ireland had, where Ireland went from all men presidents to three, two women presidents, presidents that wore absolute beautiful feminine clothes. And Mary Robinson being one of them went on to be a UN ambassador for femininity. And on that note, I'd like to say, Thank you for sitting here and listening. Um, there's point, three points of Guinness down the back for anybody who wants them. Uh, and to drink Guinness does not mean that you're not spiritual. Thank you.